Hi, this is Emily. I'm here to talk to you about my January 2016 children's literature book reads as I have read, finished, and studied them. So if you're familiar with Roald Dahl, he wrote Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, The Witches, The Twits, all kinds of great books for children. This is Charlie and the Glass Elevator, which is the second book that comes after Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And I just read it for the first time. Um, I have to say that I, I'm not overly impressed with this book. I didn't like it very much, so I, I, I didn't miss much by having never read it. Um, if you're familiar with the story, at the end of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, they leave on the glass elevator up through the roof of the factory. This book starts right after that. They're still in the elevator. They just left there. They're floating around in the air, flying every which way. They push a wrong button, and they end up in outer space. They end up landing on a giant space station where they have... There's some sort of political allegory there. There's a, the president of the United States is there and some political figures and they're not recognizing them. Um, they're calling them foreign invaders and they're calling them aliens and talking about destruction and killing them. And so it's really kind of, I mean, I didn't like it. The whole space theme was just a little bit oddball out there. So I don't know. You're not um, missing much. I only really recommend the first book at this point. So I also read the very first book in the series of unfortunate events, The Bad Beginning by Lemony Snicket, whose real name is Daniel Handler. And I read all of the series about 15 years ago. Um, so since I'm st I was working on a module for a class I'm developing in children's literature, um, studying the kind of the orphan theme, I wanted to read this one because it's, it's considered a dark satire. And um, it is about the Baudelaire um, orphan children. And it's quite brilliant, uh, witty. Um, very dark and gloomy and melancholic and um, I, you know I, I, as I recall some of the, the the subsequent books have quite a bit of um, uh, literary reference and in a humorous way toward toward classic literature that the author puts in and what's interesting about um, Daniel Handler is that he has a very unusual narration talent which is you know you'll be reading the book from the third person perspective but then suddenly he sort of steps into the scene and talks to the reader. He'll, he'll say, um, you know, Sonny did something with this and it's a, a very complicated word. And he'll say, in case you didn't know, the definition of this word means this. So he'll like kind of stop and step in and talk to the reader and then go back out and give you that third bird's eye view. So he's very talented and these are really fun books. Great adult reads, honestly. Um, a lot of sort of underlying metaphor and room for analysis in his books um very well written also um so just real quick i did a full review of philomena in january you can find that on my bookstation um if you look for the back in january by kate sarity it's about a little orphan girl named philomena in hungary whose grandmother dies and she was um you know living with her grandmother and her grandmother sets her off before she dies to find her missing auntie who she'll have to live with if she can find her so she ends up on this sort of adventure on her own and this is a vintage 1955 copy of very first printing you can get a modern version of the book as well and i'll put the link for that as well as some of the others in the um, comments box below so absolutely beautiful story uh, and it covers some of the themes of death and being able to talk to the deceased in the afterlife um, or the idea of it and it's just charming and sweet and I think Carrie Sarity is a brilliant writer so please check out my review about Philomena and this needs um, very little discussion because I did a full book review on King of the Wind by Marguerite Henry Marguerite Henry did Stormy Misty's Full, Misty of Chincoteague, lots of horse books which in the 70s and 80s when I was growing up were very uh, popular and I love her books and she has really lovely horse illustrations. King of the Wind was an American Literature Children's Book Award winner and I forget who gives the award but out of all the books she did it's one of the two that won a children's literary award and it has illustrations and of course this is another vintage copy because I do like enjoy and collect vintage children's books but you can find a modern paperback scholastic copy probably of it um Misty of Chincoteague is my favorite this is my second favorite it's about a little boy um from Morocco who brings the first Arabian to um Britain who is his friend or France and then Britain and so it's um and then some tragic things happen along the way and until the very end of their lifespan together so it's a very touching story I really enjoyed it okay 
Here's a fun book. This is brand new. And if you're familiar with the Muppets, Mo Williams, one of the original creators, he and uh, Tony Dittrelizzi, I can never pronounce, um, who did the Spiderwick Chronicles, did this book together, co-authored, co-illustrated. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, so it's a really cute hardback book that takes place in Paris. It's between a cat and a dog, a friendship. And I mostly purchased this book for the artwork of the two illustrators because they're both extremely talented um, in their art and I know their work quite well. And I love the sort of vintage uh, themed artwork in here of Paris. And the book is really about a cat and a dog who befriend each other and help each other step out of their boundaries and come over their fears and explore the world a little bit. And it's super cute. It's very, very sweetly written. Um, if that's a good way to phrase it. And it's called The Story of Diva and Flea. Brand new book as told by Mo Williams and Tony Dittrelizzi. It's a really a nice little collectible book. I really enjoyed reading that a great deal. And I'm going to do a full review of this. I haven't done it yet. I'll do that next. Where the Mountain Meets the Moon, a Newbery Award winning honor book by Grace Lin, who is an American or Chinese American author. And this is an absolutely gorgeous book. I, I can't recommend it enough. Um, it it's very interesting, and so it's in a girl. It's a girl's adventure story. Traditionally, we see boys in adventure stories. This is a girl's adventure story where she goes on a quest to eliminate the suffering of her parents' poverty, and she knows that there's a way she can do that by you know finding the dragon and finding the magic note. There's all these sort of steps and things she has to do on the way to sort of um, save. Sort of, she wants to save her parents, sort of be a heroine and heroine and um what is interesting about this is there, there's a lot of chinese sort of folktale woven into the plot so you'll be reading the book like the story itself with um uh, you know min lee and there's the girl and her parents and then suddenly she'll come across either a character a dragon or a tiger or a person and that person will have a tale and they'll tell her a tale about their past or or how they came to be and so and i think i don't know how much of the tales that grace lynn puts in are are real based on Chinese folklore or not that much I haven't studied um, but it's interesting so you'll see here the story of the dragon gate so you'll be reading in the middle of a chapter and then you'll have this section that indicates okay the character talking is breaking off and to tell you a little bit of a folk tale um, the story of the village moon rain so it's really a lovely book very well written and it has um, Grace Lynn's own artwork in it she's a very talented artist she does some color and I showed this before in my book haul um, and she actually hadn't been even though she's Chinese American she hadn't been to Hong Kong and then she finally decided to go to Hong Kong as an adult and this is where the book um, came from from her journey there so I really love it where the mountain meets the moon very well written a very touching story with her friendship with the dragon um, and just beautiful backdrops of settings. Um, can't recommend that enough. This is a very interesting book. I covered this in my vintage book haul where I talked about how I purchased it. I hadn't read it yet. This is Kay Thompson's Eloise in Moscow. And Eloise is a very popular children's book series, you probably know. And I thought that Kay Thompson did all her own artwork. She doesn't. Hillary Knight does her artwork, as you can see here. But this book was out of print for 30 years. And it came from Kay Thompson's trip to Moscow in the Cold War. And her journey on that trip is what prompted this book. So the cover and the back are actually real newspaper um, clippings from um, stuff about the book during the time being released. Or Kay Thompson, oh, Kay Thompson, she's here in Moscow and researching um, Eloise. And there's a few of her diary excerpts. So it's really neat. And the story itself is interesting. It has kind of a Russian lisp when Eloise, uh, the narrator, has a Russian lisp to it, um, accent, dialect. And I mostly purchased this, again, for the art. What uh, the story itself, I'm not, I haven't read in the other Eloise books yet. I did purchase another one just now for February. Um, I, I, the books are, there's no punctuation, so there are no periods. So you see all these various words, she just plunks in various spots on the page. So it's kind of almost poetically written. And some of the little passages on the page don't match up to 
what's being discussed. So I think a child would have a very hard time understanding it, honestly. I don't know about the other Eloise books yet, if it's just due to this one. I do know that the, um, the art is clever, and this is like a giant menu because they're in a restaurant. And um, it's, it's really very well illustrated. Fun book, just something I wanted for my collection. So check that out. And um, I did get this. It was half off after Christmas. Um, I read this. Tis the season. It's a vintage Christmas book. It just has some really neat poems, stories, songs. And I did read this book and sort of looked at all of the art in here. It has some really neat vintage paintings in it or, you know, copies of them. And I love all Christmas books and I love Christmas and I love just books that I can really study the um, the illustrators and the artwork in it. So this was neat. It's called Tis the Season, a classic illustrated Christmas treasury. And you can get this. I got this on eBay and you could probably find a used copy. There were quite a few on there that were not very expensive at all. I really liked this one. So this was a really, really neat little book for sure. And talking about Christmas, I have to say, and I never read this, which is quite embarrassing because I've seen all of the movies and I know the story. I purchased the Grinch 50% off after Christmas as well how the Grinch stole Christmas the book itself um, I wanted to study Dr. Seuss's writing style because I like to study literature especially children's literature for the writing style how the words flow on the page how they go from one line to the next how the words are laid out and I like to study the words for underlying sort of metaphor and um you know, allegory and motifs and things like that. And Dr. Seuss, right, does all of his own illustration. They're all black and white, but he just puts in the tint of red where needed. And I was surprised that this book had some things in it that were not in the in the movies, um, for example. So I suggest reading it. I'm sure you can find it on the internet, a PDF of it. But it was just neat to purchase this for my Christmas collection. And I just liked I really like um, the art in Dr. Seuss. And this is a collectible edition. It has actually a sleeve it goes into, which I don't have here to show you. Only a few books left. And I did read Treasure Island, Robert Louis Stevenson. This took forever. And I just lost my, I kind of lost my, um, I started losing, after about three fourths of it, I just wanted it over. I really wanted it over, you know. It's a very classic boys' adventure story. And as I was reading it, the only thing I could think of was Pirates of the Caribbean because of the, the pirate dialect, the ships, the islands, the treasures, the, the whole Long John Silver Buccaneer thing. Um, but if you've never read Treasure Island, um, <laughs> it's definitely a classic literary work. This is from the Eastern Press 100 Greatest Classics Books Ever Written, my leatherbound collection. And I did a full review on that. I haven't posted yet. I'll do that shortly. So if you're interested in learning more about Treasure Island and Robert Louis Stevenson, you can watch that. And I have to share with you, and I did a full review on this, so you can check that out as well. It's on my um, channel, Heidi by Johanna Spirey. It was written in 1888. It is such a gorgeous book. I love Heidi. It is such a gorgeous book. And these Puffin Classics, there are some more that you can purchase here, are really tidy and cute easy to read they're small you can see how my hand it's the size of my hand and Heidi is really um it's just sort of the the writer just portrays this idyllic pristine almost surreal landscape of Switzerland in the mountains um absolutely stunning imagery and setting and use of characterization with Heidi as this sort of very resilient uh, little girl and in fact the Shirley Temple version of the movie um when it was, was in the 1930s is Fabulous. It's a fabulous version of the movie. I watched it after reading this, but it was absolutely 100% true to the book until you get to halfway and then it somehow spun off and changed from the book quite a, quite a great deal. <laughs> but it's such a, I mean, if you see the movie, um, I don't know, of course, a lot of things happen in the book that don't happen in that movie. And there's another more modern version of the movie, but it, she, she's an orphan. She wants to be with her grandfather who she gets dumped off at uh, up in the mountains and then gets taken away from him. So watch my review on Heidi to learn more about that. But I think any adult should read that. And Anna Green Gables, I don't want to make you roll your eyes because it's a very famous book. Very beautiful. If you don't know Ellen Montgomery, this is the third time I've read it in probably 20 years. And every time I read it, I get a different perspective because as I age, my 
my writing style has changed my reading preferences have changed chapter two gives you the best picture of the island of Avonlea and this beautiful sort of um, early or late actually Victorian life and it's just beautiful and Anne is this really spirited girl who is just resilient to everything and she has the most you know the whole imagination theme is prevalent in the entire book it's all about her imagination the entire book she imagines everything and not as like she's doing it for escapism it's because she she's very real she's real she's a realist about what her situation is and um the bad background she comes from and how she you know she's when she comes to live with the couple in the book they're disappointed because they were hoping to get a boy like they ordered an orphan out of a kind of like a mail order catalog so it's such a brilliant book i mean really it's gorgeous i mean i i just everybody should read this book i don't know i don't even know how they teach this to little children because um it took me like four or five days to read it because i i really take my time because i want to soak in the imagery but um it's uh there's so many deeper layers of things to learn in this book that a, a child wouldn't catch so that's about it for my january book reads i did read one story from my hans christian anderson treasury and of course the little mermaid the snow queen were two of his fairy tales that i love i love hans christian anderson much more than i love the brothers Grimm for for fairy tale authors in that time period and it's i read the one story little ida's flowers which is and you can find a pdf of this or the story of it on the internet but it's really all about death <laughs> it's kind of for the for the era that it was written it sort of shows how a child comes to terms with processing or thinking about death so it's about a little girl who comes to love and appreciate flowers and when the human the humans the adults are not around the flowers come to life and and then they start to die and she has to deal with burying them and covering them and processing their death so it's kind of um it's very short short story but really pretty uh, hans christian anderson is absolutely just um splendid he's just just delightful i mean he if you read the little mermaid and you read the snow queen you'll you will just feel like you are there you are there and you are in the story because that's how good his writing is with the the, the use of the senses taste touch smell sight sound and the, the the scenery like you're in the book in the book you're in the story he's an absolutely brilliant writer the best scene and imagery writer i've ever i've ever read so thank you for watching and keep an eye out for my february uh book haul take care